Cisco that uh, uh, publishing their annual cybersecurity readiness index. Yeah, well, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah, number man. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm the security guy. Um, although we all play security and you know have security responsibilities here and there, but um, yeah, like you mentioned, Pat, at the top of the the broadcast, Cisco's been doing this for quite a while. I mean, they put a lot of effort into this. Um, it's been going on for many many years, and there were a few things that sort of struck me um, as, uh, as as eye opening. And in fact, the Cisco team interviewed me, and I was featured in their payload um, announcement around this. And so they, they kind of recorded some of my thoughts. But two things that really kind of stood out for me. Number one, a statistic uh, on, on with the current you know survey around um, the fact that only 15% of respondents stated that they felt that their organizations were well prepared for a cyber attack. That is that is frightening right there. And you know, from my perspective, you know, we're obviously dealing with inflationary pressures. The Fed continues to raise interest rates to try to slow down the economy. But I don't think, you know, given that statistic, um, companies need to continue to invest in in, in in cybersecurity and threat prevention and mitigation because it's it's not gonna stop. I mean, bad actors are getting more and more sophisticated and it's gonna continue. The other stat that I found um, uh, you know, surprising because I thought it would have been a lot more was average loss of productivity or profitability or business impact at half a million dollars. Now, you could argue, well, it depends on um, the survey sample. Were these mid-market, were these large enterprises? I asked that question of Cisco. Um, didn't get a straight answer on that. But uh, suffice it to say, you know, a business loss uh, of an average of half a million seems really underreported to me. I would have expected you know, the opportunity cost for denial of service and even just ransomware. You know that that tends to be in the millions of dollars or millions of euros. But those are the two sort of eye-opening um, statistics that I found. Yeah, it's interesting. So uh, a little bit of uh, kind of stepping back. Uh, a lot of people don't look or think of Cisco when you think of security, but they're a top three revenue vendor for security. And what they did that was super smart is, first of all, they bought some cutting edge properties, right, for, for security. And they integrated them knowing that what IT, again, back to what I had said previously about security, uh, when we talk about access, was Enterprises are getting sick of integration. The cost and time of integration is actually making them less secure. Right. Right. Um, the the second unique thing uh, that about Cisco in here is that they marry observability with security. Yeah. Right. And shocker, uh, if you look at because they own most parts of the network, uh, they can. Uh, cut off certain parts of the network if if there's an intrusion, right? Uh, in fact, uh, there was a pivot that I saw with Cisco. I don't know if it was five or six years ago, where you know it wasn't just networking, networking, networking. It was networking as security. Yeah. And and they came in there, made some acquisitions, uh, uh, pulled pulled those together, and it's it, it's pretty impressive. And by the way, they, I think they were the number one uh, security. Uh, property out there in terms of revenue, and then Microsoft put the uh, put the pedal to the metal in there, and I think uh, nipped them right out there. But listen, if you're a top three, great. The other thing I like about Cisco's networking play is, again, doesn't matter where it is, on-prem, on the edge, in the public cloud, they can still get money. And yeah. uh, every quarter, you know, you talk about, um, you know, Chuck gets up and talks about uh, the amount of revenue as a service, uh, or the recurring revenue, or and then software revenues, and how much of those are recurring revenues. So, um, good job. And it, Cisco is just known. I mean, I don't yeah. know if you guys know this, but uh, the term corporate thought leadership came from a core group at uh, at Cisco. Huh. That know. gentleman who was there. Uh, who was advising them? His name is John Volkman. Uh, he used to run uh, part of corporate marketing. It's funny. I think at one point he worked for me, and at one point I worked for him. But uh, um, he came and and did this. And part of this was creating 
surveys and indexes like this to be able to show thought leadership. And that's exactly what this do. It's great, great to see that uh, 20 years later, Cisco is is still doing this. Yeah. yeah. Now, Cisco, I might add, Cisco, just, 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 Cisco announced that uh, they're going to start a, uh, a quantum lab in Santa Clara, California. Oh, wow. And uh, they'll be working on photonics and different things. But uh, quantum keys are you know, commercially viable right now. And with all the uh, issues coming up with uh, quantum safe and and uh, you know, people hacking into uh, old databases to uh, save it for later on when they can use quantum computing to, to hack into it. So I suspect they're probably going to be going after that market at some time. That's interesting. And, yeah. Yeah, and so far, IBM seems to be taking uh, taking the lead on quantum safe. I mean, not only does IBM have quantum computing, but they're a top ten uh, security yeah. vendor as well. Yeah. yeah, Paul. Just I'll have the final. Final comment on that point. So Liz and Tony that drives emerging tech at Cisco. Uh, at uh, Cisco Live EMEA, she spoke at a very high level about that, about quantum and what they're doing there. And I think we're going to learn a lot more at Cisco Live in early June um, around their strategy with quantum.